Hello, Bible readers. It's Monday, May 24th. We're reading from Ezekiel 23 and 24, Revelation 17 and 18. I did not prepare my own notes on this as I usually do, so I'm going to be reading at length from my commentaries. Uh, I would apologize, but it's one of those weekends, and so um, I, I find these helpful, uh, so maybe maybe these are better than what I typically create anyway. So um, starting with Revelation 17, this is the vision of Babylon. The description of the awesome period of woe comes to an end, and one of the angels offers to show John the judgment of Babylon. John sees Babylon seated on a scarlet beast. The vision includes detailed interpretation of various parts of the vision, quite out of keeping with other parts of Revelation right? Like usually the author doesn't tell us much about what anything's supposed to mean. Here it's a little different. This vision is then followed by a sequence of heavenly acclamations juxtaposed with earthly laments over Babylon's fate. And the other thing I wanted to share here, this is a little longer, mention was made in the commentary, what I just read, of the way in which isolated historical events can be taken up and become part of a prophet's visionary insight. So this this speaks to the place of how much uh, how much do we need to know about the history of things in order to understand the point of what the author is trying to make. For the writer of Revelation, recollections of past events, whether from the late 60s at the time of the Jewish revolt and the chaos after the death of Nero, or from the time of Domitian, They've infused the visionary's imagination and become part of the apparatus of the symbolic world and graphic scenery that he creates. The original historical significance of these events is transcended and ceases to determine their import within the framework of the prophecy. In other words, the original historical references, although perhaps interesting, are not necessary to understanding. The discussion of such possible historical illusions raises an important question. Does it matter whether or not we can now pick up all the illusions? That is a matter of interest only if we think that the sole way to make sense of an ancient text is to locate it precisely in its ancient context. That strategy may be necessary if a text remains utterly opaque. That means really hard to understand. Revelations difficulty to understand has little to do with our inability to understand the illusions though the point at issue in revelation 13 for example is pretty clear don't worship the beast or the dragon that stands behind the beast we don't need to know the first century in order to understand revelation history can satisfy our curiosity and occasionally enrich our exegesis but it's not essential for it exegesis is the unpacking of meaning. What we have in Revelation 17 are traces of a first century setting that have been taken up in the language of visionary imagery so that the contingent is rendered in a form that transcends original circumstances to become prophetic announcement. Modern readers do not need to understand ancient illusion in order to make sense of the text. It's an argument that I think many would make, that we can make sense of this without all the details. And then uh, Ezekiel, the tragic tale of two sisters. Um, true to Ezekiel's oracles thus far, chapter 23 seeks to justify Yahweh's impending destruction of Jerusalem. Here as in chapter 16, the prophet takes up, sustains, and elaborates upon a literary convention, the personification of cities as women. Ezekiel 16 focused especially on Jerusalem's idolatry, depicted metaphorically as adultery. This chapter emphasizes the faithless and fickle international alliances pursued by both Samaria and Jerusalem. For Ezekiel, a political isolationist, such alliances constituted flagrant disloyalty to God, who alone should be the object of their trust. And so it goes on to describe how um, most critics contend that Ezekiel 23 is the end of a lengthy and complex process inspired by Jeremiah's story of faithless Israel and her sister, false Judah. Um, so it's just another way of, of 
Ezekiel unpacking how God is doing this for a reason. This isn't just happenstance. I am one with my God. My God is with us, all of us, at all times and in all places.